The Mutual Broadcasting System, in cooperation with Family Theater Incorporated, presents Out of the Wilderness, starring Gail Storm and Bill Williams. Maureen O'Hara is your hostess. <laughs> More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. We like to think that it's an American trait to look ahead, to plan for the future. We've become a great nation because we've planned wisely. We consider ourselves able to analyze what's right or wrong with a situation because we are a nation of individuals who can think. And as a nation, we stand together for family life because to you and me, to all of us, our children, our families, our homes are of first importance. They're worth working for and fighting for. Yes, and praying for because we know that bread and butter aren't the only things that keep a family together. It takes the advice and example of God-respecting and God-loving parents. That's why family prayer is so important. It's a real inspiration in a home, because a family at prayer is a family at peace. It's our families, yours and mine, looking ahead and planning for peace in our homes, in our nation, and in the world. Maureen O'Hara will speak again after tonight's family theater play, Out of the Wilderness, starring Bill Williams and Gail Storm. This is the story of a man and woman who are almost forgotten in the pages of history. They are descendants of the pioneer group who moved westward from New England, New Jersey, and Pennsylvania in restless expectation of new freedom and a new land. Out of the wilderness where they settled came the dawn of a new civilization. At the turn of the century, this was Kentucky, a friendly state, and they were a friendly people, these pioneers, friendly and strong dreaming and hoping and suffering together. The state was still half wilderness, but new homes and small scattered towns were beginning to appear. Here, on a day in early spring, our story begins. I can't understand you, Tom. Most fellas your age would jump at the chance to join up with our party going west. Kentucky's my home, Henry. Don't see no reason for leaving. Well, Tom, when I hear folks talking about getting on the move towards Indiana, I just gotta up and join them. Maybe there's something wrong with my way of thinking, Henry. But that sort of talk makes me feel more like staying here. Oh, you ain't gonna build up this country, Tom. It's gonna stay a wilderness. The way I sees it, the good Lord wouldn't let us all come here to Kentucky, let us all suffer hardships, some even get killed, unless he meant for the rest of us to stay on and struggle. So that Kentucky wouldn't always be a wilderness. When you talk like that, Tom, I wonder if I'm doing right to think of leaving. Of course you are, Henry. He's got plans for Indiana, same as he's got for Kentucky. My pa moved once from the Shenandoah Valley to Kentucky. I was no more than a year old when he'd done it. But I've been told what a dangerous trip it was over the wilderness road. Yep. One time, pa had, oh, about 2,000 acres of farmland. And he and Ma was fixing to settle down and raise us five kids. I might have had me a good farm today, but for what happened, it was this way. My brother Maud- Mordecai and Josiah and I were out with Pa. It was just a few years... Mordecai, take hold of Tom's hand so he don't stumble on another them stones. Oh, yeah, Pa. And come on there, Tom. Hey, look where you're going. Josiah, uh, take the other end of them rails. Ain't too far to carry him. 
was going to fix the fence where she broke. Lucky you seen the fence needed fixing before the cattle did. They'd have been spread all over the country if they got loose. Yeah, they wouldn't have got fur before some redskin found them. Oh, I wish there wasn't redskins anywhere. Uh, sometimes you can't figure out the Lord's ways. Makes nice warm nights so you can set outdoors and then he sends skeeters and bugs to make you go in to get away from them. Makes beautiful farming country like Kentucky. Then puts redskins all around the place to make it downright dangerous to get the chore done. But I guess it's his way. Tom, Tom, will you settle down in one place? You're going to get hit by one of these rails. Oh, you want me to take Tom in tomorrow, Pa? <laughs> Might be a good idea, Mordecai. All right, I'll be Here, just say, on, give me man. a hand with this. Come over here, Tom. Here. We're going to go inside. <laughs> Indians, grab your rifle, Pa! Pa! Josiah, Pa's been shot! Run to the fort for help! I'll get to the Redskins if any shows up. <laughs> They tell me Josiah ran off to get help, while Mordecai took cover and waited. I was still sitting out in the clearing when the Indian snuck out of the underbrush and come to get me. Mordecai took aim with his rifle. I hit him! I hit him! He's running off! He never touched Tom! Ma! Ma, come out here quick! Ma's been shot! After that, Henry, my family sort of spread out all over the territory. I stayed around Kentucky with relatives, and Ma and my sister went farther west. And instead of owning them 2,000 acres today, I, I got nothing. Well, that was too bad. Maybe it was, and maybe it wasn't. It made me want to keep on working instead of getting something for myself. If and I'd have got those acres, I, I might have not had the same feeling I got today. Well, good luck to you, Henry. I hope Indiana is as good to you as I figure Kentucky will be to me. Tom was just one of the very ordinary people in the Kentucky of that day. He was learning the carpenter's trade, making cabinets, door frames, window sash, and coffins. And occasionally, he hired out to farmers, augmenting his meager income as well as his knowledge of crops. But despite his intentions of becoming successful, he had peculiar business habits. Tom, I can't figure you out. What's the matter, Mr. Forrester? What did I do? Nothing. That's the trouble. You know I've been looking for someone to do cabinet work at my place. Why didn't you come around asking for work? You ain't been busy, have you? No, I ain't busy. I just hadn't gotten around to doing it. That's what I can't figure out about you, Tom. Why you don't set out after more jobs instead of waiting for folks to hunt you up? Long as they always hunt me up, don't see that it matters much. Maybe if they'd stop hunting, I'd start doing it myself. Maybe not. Nice place you got, Mr. Forrester. I'm looking to have something like this someday. It ain't nothing fancy, Tom. But it does for me and my wife. With our kids married and gone, it, it's all we need. You've been in Hardin County just about as long as anybody, ain't you? When we settled down here, Tom, there was just two other cabins. I've seen Elizabeth Town grow to where she is today. Yep. Only thing we need more of here is folks with families. That's what builds up any territory, families. Individuals are important enough, but each families counts most. Reckon that's right. Maybe it's none of my business, but how come you're still a bachelor? I'm aiming to get married one of these days. I figure a fella's got to have a little something first. Cost like fury to have a wife. Every day and month, the wilderness was being cleared. 
Tom saw the new civilization that came with the towns and the villages growing up around him. He knew he was part of this development. He had helped to clear some of the rough ground. Yes, there was a part of him in the green fields of corn and in the rich blue grass that had been planted. It was part of his work, but more still, part of his hope for the future. Tom had been saving a little money, and now he felt he was ready for marriage. With this thought in mind, he looked admiringly at a small, pretty brunette who, like himself, had come as a baby across the wilderness road into Kentucky. Evening, ma'am. Hello, Tom. Going to church meeting tonight, Nancy? Mm-hmm. So am I. Are you? Yep. Well, that's nice. I suppose I'll see you there. Well, I, I suppose. It's about time to leave now. <laughs> yes, ain't it? Just about. Well... If you're going to church meeting... Yeah? Why don't you walk me over there? I was fixing to ask you. I know you was. But I was afeard if I waited till you did, we'd both be late. Well, Tom, come in. Howdy, Mr. Forrester. I was wondering if you had any need for new cabinets. Why, Tom, when did you start looking for work? I thought you always waited for work to hunt you up. <laughs> yep, only now I need more work. Got more use for money now. Sounds like to me a gal's mixed up in this, Tom. Who is she? Zeke Sparrow's adopted gal, Nancy. Have you asked her yet? Nope. Don't wait too long. Nope, I, I did that once. But now that I know Nancy, I'm glad I waited. Reckon things will work out all right now. Tom didn't waste time either. While he didn't get right to the business of proposing marriage, still nobody else got an opportunity to do so because Tom took up most of Nancy's free time. What are you doing, Nancy? Reading the Bible. Lots of folks around here read the Bible. I reckon there ain't much else to read. There ain't much else a person needs to read. You read, don't you, Tom? I can read some. Never had much time for the alphabet, though, but, but I did learn to sign my name. Like to have me read to you? I read some of it once. It won't hurt you to hear it again. Every time I start reading the Bible, I begin to think about things. I get to reading, and then I just sit and look and... See my thoughts go a-wandering. How do you mean? I guess you'd call it daydreaming. I've done a lot of daydreaming, too. Thinking of things that's ahead. Things that'll probably never happen. That's what I mean. I'm always wondering how tomorrow will be. Maybe it's because I ain't satisfied with how today is. That's a good sign, Nancy. You find some folks fretting and stewing about things that happened yesterday. But never trying to fix them so that when tomorrow comes, they'll be better. That kind selfish. Selfish? Mm-hmm. Some of them figure they ain't gonna be here tomorrow. They don't care what happens to somebody else. They ain't interested in making tomorrow better. And they ain't gonna be around themselves to enjoy it. I reckon that's it. Someday I plan on having children, and I'd like to think they're gonna find things a little better than we've got it. Yep. Maybe it don't seem like it, but, but we got better things than our folks had. That's what they call progress, I guess. Want me to read to you now, Tom? Mm-hmm. You read, and I'll sit here listening and thinking. The Profound Thinking of Pioneers In their own way, Tom and Nancy were the spirit of these early settlers whose outstanding deeds were the simple events of their everyday lives. One night when Tom was at Nancy's house. Mountains look pretty in the twilight, don't they, Nancy? Mm-hmm. Pretty looking early in the morning, too. Mm-hmm. I guess there ain't a time of day when they ain't pretty. Mm-hmm. Can't you say nothing but mm-hmm? Uh -huh? 
Can't you talk about nothing but mountains? Well, I sure can, Nancy. But I guess I was just holding back. Kind of waiting for my nerve to catch up with my tongue. Do I scare you, Tom? Huh? Oh, no. Nah. You don't scare me none. Why would you? Well, you scare me. I do? What are you afraid of? I'm afraid you ain't gonna say what you come over here tonight to say. <laughs> that done it. It's caught up. Now what sort of nonsense are you talking about? <laughs> my nerve. It's caught up with my tongue. Nancy, maybe this will surprise you some, but... Well, let's you and me get married. Well, Tom, I can't say I ain't expecting this, and I can't say I ain't willing, if you're sure you ain't making a mistake. Only mistake I made was waiting so long to ask you. I guess maybe I'm a little slow, but I felt this way after the first evening we spent together. Why didn't you ask me then, Tom? Weren't you sure you wanted me? Just as sure as I am tonight. I wanted to be sure you wanted me. Takes two people thinking alike to make a family, Nancy. Well... I guess your father would like to be knowing my intentions. Good evening, Mr. Sparrow. Hey, howdy, Tom. Fine evening. Oh, I have seen some better and some worse. Yep. Something troubling you, Tom? Well, trouble? Yeah. Uh, no, sir. Not exactly what I'd call trouble, but... No, I got no trouble. Ah, that's good. Yep, I... Oh, shucks, all the time. Tell me what's on your mind. Well, Nancy is. Your daughter's on my mind. I, I want to get mad, and I think she does, too. She does? Well, why don't you ask her and make certain? I did ask her. Well? She said she would, but... Well, I, I got to thinking, and maybe you ah, might... It takes too long to get the point, Tom. You're one if I object? No, dead rat of Tom, no. Congratulations to your son. And you take good care of her. In that simple way, Tom and Nancy began announcing their coming wedding plans. And when the day arrived, it was a quiet ceremony with only their friends present. But afterwards, the celebration and festival in her father's home was the biggest event of their humble lives. Can I get you some vittles, Nancy? Oh, Tom, I guess I'm just too happy to eat. Well, I guess I'll maybe just nibble a bit on that venison. Looks good. Mm-hmm. You know, Tom, every time I went to a wedding, I'd, I'd sort of cry. I never knew why. But now I know. Nancy, I don't know exactly what you're talking about. I'm just trying to tell you how happy I am, Tom. <laughs> well, I never. You're crying now because you're happy. Tom, you better get some vittles for yourself. Nope. I was thinking we ought to get on our way before they start roughing it up like they usually try to do. Let's slip outside quietly. I got my horse hitched right by the door. Come on. <laughs> Nancy, us riding along like this reminds me of Ma telling stories about how princes and princesses got married. They always rode off in a gold carriage with high-stepping horses. My mother used to tell me stories like that. <laughs> this ain't exactly the same. Both of us riding on one horse and not a high-stepping either. It don't make no difference to me, Tom. We're together, ain't we? Yep. <laughs> then all we gotta do is pretend this is a gold carriage. <laughs> ain't got enough imagination to think old Bess is a gold carriage. <laughs> I'd rather have her stay like she is anyhow. Need her for plowing. <laughs> <laughs> Keep moving, Bess. We're nearing Elizabeth Town. Getting closer to home, Nancy. Our home. That was the way a new family began. The days passed quickly. And then there came a day when the population of Elizabethtown was increased by one. When Tom and Nancy had their first child, a daughter they named Sarah. Tom's reaction to his firstborn was in keeping with his deep-rooted feeling for Kentucky. Boy, girl, it'll make no difference to me. Me neither, Tom. All I know is children grow up to be adults. And they begin thinking, just like you and I have done our thinking. 
When you get enough grown folks thinking, that's always good. Ain't she a pretty baby, Tom? Look how her nose wrinkles up when she smiles. She looks just like her ma. I take that for a compliment, and thank you. If she grows up to have as much sense as her ma, I'll be satisfied. And by the time she grows up, I hope you and I and all the other folks in Kentucky will have worked things out so maybe she'll find living a little better. You keep talking like you don't think much of Kentucky right now. Outside of you and Sarah and finding enough work to do, all else I do think of is Kentucky, Nancy. I can see it moving ahead already. But it seems to move so slow, people keep getting in the way. They don't mean to, I reckon. They just don't know any better. Oh, now we've talked so loud we woke up little Sarah. It's my fault. I've been saying things she ain't ready to listen to yet. Someday likely, but not yet. No, oh, don't cry, baby, now. It ain't time for your supper yet. Maybe you'd like to have me sing to you, hmm? Fly in the sugar bowl shoe, fly shoe. Fly in the sugar bowl shoe, fly shoe. Fly in the sugar bowl shoe, fly shoe. Skip to Maloo, my darling. Oh, look at her. Not long after Sarah was born, Tom was given a job on one of the large farms. He began helping with the farming. They moved to a small cabin where they were allowed to live. They were very happy for a while, but Tom had plans. One day he burst suddenly into their small home. Nancy! Nancy, where are you? Land sakes, Tom, is something wrong? You sound like you've been running for miles. Nancy, remember when we talked about someday having a cabin all our own? Of course I do. And someday we will, too, Tom. Get ready to start moving. We got it. Now. What? Oh, Tom! Yeah. I've been working at it off and on for the past three months to surprise you. Now she's done. Where's it at, Tom? You know that little piece of ground by the big south fork of Nolan Creek? Mm -hmm. That's her. About two and a half miles from Hoganville. Oh, that's the most wonderful thing I've ever heard in my life, Tom. It ain't much, Nancy. It's just one big room. All we got is a packed down dirt floor. It don't look like a lot, but it's all our own. Let's move today. It won't take long. Well, I'm ready. I, I figure we ain't well off long as we're working for somebody else. Starting now, we're working just for us. You and me and Sarah. Oh, I might as well tell you now, Tom. There's likely to be more than three of us soon. I noted for some time, Nancy. And that made me work fast and never to get our place finished in plenty of time. We ain't gonna have things easy for a while. It'll be hard going, but... How many folks in Kentucky have had easy going, Tom? That's how I sees it, too, Nancy. You see, he... A person don't appreciate something that's handed over to him near as much as something he had to work and sweat to get. And work and sweat to keep. As cabins go, theirs was very crude. The one door swung on leather hinges. There was one small window for light and a stick clay chimney for the fireplace. And the floor was packed down dirt. But it was theirs. Tom had built it. Early that year, certain activity created a lot of comment among the neighbors. I just seen Aunt Peggy Walters. She told me Tom and Nancy had sent for her quick. Is that a fact? Aunt Peggy? My goodness, that'll make two young'uns for him, won't it? Yeah. Oh, I hope this one's another gal. Always did like gal babies better than boy babies. <laughs> Guess it don't make no difference to Nancy. Land sakes, I must get over to the Farrells and tell them about it. I'm going over to Nancy's later on. Maybe I can fix up things for her a bit. Well, tell her I'll be over tomorrow. Oh, my goodness me, that is new. <laughs> Lord, I never asked you for many things before, but I knew that when I did ask, I'd get consideration from you. And I ain't asking for nothing for myself, but Nancy's inside there in the cabin, Lord. Look after her, will you please? And look after the new little one, too. Thank you kindly, Lord. Nancy, honey. Aunt Peggy said I could come in now. Look at the baby, Tom. Ain't he beautiful? He? It's a boy? That's right, Tom. I wanted this one to be a boy for your sake. But I never said nothing about it out loud. Nights, I'd... 
I'd pray real hard. And it looks like the good Lord just up and answered my prayers. He's a cute little fella. Keep him covered up, Tom. Maybe you better throw some more wood on the fire. I will, Nancy. What do you think they want to name? I've been thinking. I think it'd be nice to name him after your grandfather who fought under General Washington. You want to call him Abraham? Well, that's a right upstanding name, Tom. Abraham Lincoln. Don't you like it? Abraham Lincoln. Yep. He's starting out with a mighty good name. Hope he lives up to it, Nancy. This is Maureen O'Hara again. From the story, Out of the Wilderness, there comes more than the mention of Abraham Lincoln because he arose as a symbol in our American life. His was the way of a man that is companionable, the way of those who love their fellow men. He was a believer in God and in mankind, a believer in the lessons of the past and the hopes of the future, a believer in time and in eternity, in silence and in laughter, and a believer in prayer and sacrifice. And from his courage and difficulties, there comes new hope in our own generation, a hope that the foundation of our way of life, our American homes, will stay together in peace and unity, for a house divided against itself cannot stand. Where there is disunity and division, there is no peace. And without God, without the help of prayer, there can be no real unity or order. That's why family prayer should be a daily practice in all our homes, because the family that prays together stays together. Before saying goodnight, I'd like to thank Gail Storm and Bill Williams for their performances this evening. Our thanks to Jack Price for writing tonight's play and to Max Tear for his music. This production of Family Theatre Incorporated was directed by David Young. Others who appeared in tonight's cast were Paul Fries, Joe Duval, Dick Ryan, Peter Rankin, William Wallaceby, Jack Petruzzi, Mary Lee Robb, and Marjorie Bennett. Next week, our family theater stars will be Rosemary DeCamp and Bobby Driscoll in The Future is Yours. Your host will be Don McNeil. This is Maureen O'Hara saying good night and God bless you. This series of the Family Theater broadcast is made possible by the thousands of you who felt the need for this kind of program and by the mutual broadcasting system which has responded to this need. Be with us next week when our Family Theater stars will be Rosemary DeCant and Bobby Bristol with Don McNeil as host, Tony Lofrano speaking. Next Thursday, this program will be heard one half hour later over most of these stations, directly following the address by President Truman. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.